Hello, fellow Rosarians. Are you ready to build an obelisk? I am so excited to share this with you. When I originally stumbled across a video on how to make an obelisk, it was one of my friends and another one of the Facebook groups. It came from Rose and Garden Enthusiast, and it was Nikki over there. So in the event that you'd like to see her video, I'm sure she's going to post it to the announcements of her page. She does some different things um, than I'm going to do. She chooses, um, I'm using two by two by eights. For some of the support boards, she goes one by two by eight. And we just decided to make it easy. Let's just do two by two by eight for the whole thing. And her husband is a really awesome carpenter and not that mine's not, but <laughs> her husband takes it to another level and he does pocket screws. We're not going to do that, but she also does show another way to do it in the event that you are, you don't want to put the bracket supports where we're screwing, you know, in between the boards to hide the screws a little bit. So let me go ahead and put up here on the screen, everything that you're going to need for this project. So what I'm assuming for this project is that you have um, screwdrivers and we're just using two because it makes it less times that we would have to be changing out um, the, he the heads of those um, to either pre-drill or to use a screw. So if you only have one, that's okay too. Um, for the uh, miter saw, we're using 10 degrees for all of those cuts. So you are going to want something that has that degree mark and that just helps you to get that really nice cut for the support pieces. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I've got a little bit of an overhead view so that you can see what's going on. Um, I forgot something and that is I'm using an 8 by 8 inch uh, section for the top. And Ken, you said it was 7 and 3 quarters by 7 and 3 quarters? 7 and 5 sixteenths. 7 and 5 sixteenths by 7 and 5 sixteenths. <laughs> so you're going to use this for the top. So how do you know what size to make your obelisk? In my case, my hydrangeas get to be eight foot tall. So what I did was I took the boards and I held it up next to it at an angle like this. And I just kind of looked at it to decide, do I want the full eight foot or do I want to go a little bit shy of that? And in my case, it ended up being about seven foot that I'd be using because you've got the finial that you're also putting on top. So let's go ahead and get this spaced out real quick. In my case, um, I measured the box for the um, my hydrangeas are in a little bit of a raised box. I needed it 34 inches apart to make sure that I could span that box and get the look that I wanted. Most obelisks, so remember we did the unboxing recently for the plow and hearth, it's going to be about 14 inches wide. They can go up to about 25 or so inches. It really just depends on what you want. So here's my suggestion. Go ahead and lay it out in the the form that you want. So in this case, I need to get it 34 inches. Go ahead and pull that. Oopsie, I lost you. Okay, so this is about what I'm looking at. Inside to inside, about 34 inches. And then I'm going to put my block on the top. Let me go ahead and move this up real quick. So you can see how the block on top is going to be, and I measured the width in between these legs, 34 inches, and that gives you a rough idea for this very first template side, how you're going to put it together. So for the length on mine, I've chosen to make them 75 inches long. Ken cut these for me, the length that I needed, and then he put a 10 degree angle on the top, and what is hard to see right here is this angle on both of these because these are spread allows it to go flush with the top he also created the brace piece here he just held up a piece of wood to um, figure out what the right dimension was and marked it and cut it and so do you see how it has the angles the 10 degree angles on it the smaller side is going to go up do 19 inches from the bottom and mark here. So Ken, if you want to mark those. So you're going to have three braces that are 19 inches measuring starting from the bottom. So three and then that little small one at the top. So 19 
and then 19 from that mark with your pencil, and then 19. You're gonna do that on this other side also, and then just measure the distance between your span, and that's the size brace you're going to make, keeping in mind it's going to be at that 10, 10 degrees uh, for those ends. So now you can see we've got one template already built. Uh, we're going to do the exact same thing now, just one more time. Um, so let's go ahead and mirror this.
so where are we now? Uh, we have cut identical lengths from here, um, from each side of the frame. And so we made two extra for the side supports, two extra, two, and then also don't forget the top pieces. So this part requires two people because somebody needs to hold the top and then whoever you have helping you is going to be measuring the distance for the bottom and in my case it is 34 inches that I want the legs to be apart. Ken has already put the finial on top just to save us from having to get on a ladder. That's there. That edge. So now we're going to come at an angle so that we don't hit that other screw. should stay there. It's important to, um, we're going to put these other pieces on the bottom and then that should force it to be flattened up. I have another board that goes like that. So I can watch this and I can use this to make sure that that's even. Because I'm going to come down, I'm, I'm going to come above this screw into that board.
So here we are, all done. <laughs> it was, was it about an hour and a half, Ken? So an hour and a half to put it together. You really need two people at the end to kind of secure your two supports and then the braces in between. It just helps. I'm sure if you have clamps, um, that would help you in this situation. But now we are ready for paint. I have 11 hydrangea out front. I have finished two. So that means two down, nine to go. So thanks so much for joining me. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and you've got some great ideas for uh, where you can use Novolusk in your yard. So thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.